morning. Welcome to Now About Moonshine. This is our first video on more tech stuff. So Now About Tech Talk, we've called it, this playlist. Uh, in these videos, fairly short videos, going to try and look at improving narrowboaters knowledge on some of the the uh the more technical stuff you know it could be how does electricity work how do you work out cable sizing what's a galvanic isolator what does it do how does it work inverters chargers engine maintenance all that kind of stuff really so hopefully over a period of time it'll become um a wealth of knowledge <laughs> <laughs> it might do. Uh, so, yeah, I, just a bit about me. I've been electricity cell 16, uh, British Marine trained for marine work. Also qualified boat safety examiner. Um, I've had some pretty high profile jobs, really worked all over the world. So I know a lot of stuff. It's in here somewhere. So we're going to try and dig it out for you guys. Uh, not Not really how to do, but more... Let's improve people's understanding of what's going on. What's that? What's that do? How's that work? That kind of stuff. So we're going to get started today with a very basic one. And it's probably one of the first things I used to teach when I used to teach automotive. Uh, I used to do all the electrical modules. And that's Ohm's Law. The relationship between power. You've all seen that. This thing is one kilowatt. Uh, voltage. 12 volt, 24 volt. 240 volt AC, AC DC, the difference. Uh, current, which is like the flow, uh, like if you think of water, it's the flow in a circuit. And then resistance or load, which could be a motor, it could be a valve, it could be a light bulb, it could be anything like that. So this first one is just going to concentrate on Ohm's law. It allows you some simple calculations on how those four things interact with each other. And, and if, you, if, you, if you can't understand Ohm's law, then you're not going to progress into cable sizing and fusing factors and all that kind of stuff. So we need to start at the very beginning, Ohm's laws. Okay, so let's get cracking. So Ohm's law, uh, O-H, let's get on there, O-H-M-S law. Or actually, we could say laws because there's more than one. Okay, so there's there's a few things we need to do to get started. Uh, voltage, current, resistance, and power. Okay, those are the four uh, entities, want of a better word, that we're going to look at. So voltage is symbol V, and it's measured in volts. Nice and easy one to get started. Current is I. Slightly confusing, uh, but C was already taken by Coulomb, something else. So I is current, and that's measured in... Amperes, or amp amps for short. Resistance is R, and its its unit is ohms. Power is P, and that's measured in watts. There you go. That, those are the four fundamental. Uh, things, shall we say, at play. So, when when we when we look at when we look at um, just explaining this a little bit further, if we think of water, this volts is sort of pressure. Think of pressure in a hose pipe pushing the water through. Amps is the flow in a pipe. Resistance. Uh, could be a, let's say, a restriction. Not sure I spelt that correctly, but never mind. Um, a restriction or a load. And watts 
is actually work done. Okay, so when we think of water, think of these down here. It might help the understanding a little bit. Okay? So in a circuit, in a circuit, if we have a, let's get up here. If we have a, a battery, let's go that way. Um, I'm just gonna go, oh, should I? This is a, bat, this is a symbol for a battery. Uh, negative, positive. This is the circuit. That's the resistance. Okay. So V is our voltage, I is our current, and R would be our resistance. So that's a simple circuit. Uh, without going too deep, we, uh, we always say that the current flows from the positive to the negative. Not entirely true, but we'll cover that in a, in a later, in a later uh, video, I think. So uh, for convention, we always say current flows from the positive to the negative. Okay, so maths. So these, these values here can be put into triangles that allow us to solve any circuit like this and really more complex circuits. Okay, so those triangles are This is the power triangle. Don't let this worry you too much. We'll cover this in, in, in a bit more depth. And we've got the, the voltage triangle. Sometimes known as the VIR triangle, that one. So those three triangles help us solve any circuit. If we know two things, we know we can calculate the rest. Are you with me so far? <laughs> I hope you are. So, um, yeah, I think let's get cracking, eh? Let's see, let's see how these work in, in, in theory. So let's work, let's work on this circuit above and put some values in here. So for this calculation, we're gonna say V equals 10 and the resistance equals one ohm. Let's put the values in, let's keep it all nice and okay. So what we want to find, what we don't know, is how much current is going to flow in that circuit. So we don't know what cable to fit, to install, and we wouldn't know what fusing to put in either. So how do we find out what the current is in this circuit for this example? Well, coming back to this first voltage triangle there, uh, we want to find I. So just cover the I, and you can see you've got V over R. So, I equals V over R. Okay. So, we know the voltage is 10. And we know the resistance is 1. So, in this case, R would be 10 amps. It's as simple as that. And then you can use that for cable calculations, size calculations. We're gonna go into all that in future videos, but uh, cable calculations, fusing factors, all that kind of stuff. So let's change that a bit. What if what if now we, we, we said uh, the resistance, instead of being one, was now five ohms. Okay, so back again. I equals V over R, which equals 10 over five, which equals two amps. Happy days, it does not get any easier than that, folks. It does not get any easier than that. <clears throat> and look, again, going back to this circuit here, if we wanted to find out what R was, so let's go here, R equals V over I, and if we want to know what V is, cover that up. And this is like saying I times R. So V equals I times R. 
or sometimes you'll see IR, which means current times resistance. <clears throat> so we can work backwards of these, just in case nobody believes me. If we're looking for R in this case, let's look at this example here. We've got uh, resistance 10 over, what current did we say? Two amps, two amps equals five ohms. Yeah. And if we're gonna work this one out, we don't know what the voltage is. It is current, which was two, two times resistance of five. So V equals two times five, which equals 10 volts. So you can see that balances out and you can check your work backwards like that. So that circuit should always, those calculations should always be able to work backwards. Hopefully that's not too scary. What I'll do at the end, what I'll do at the end is just put some questions on there and you can have a go yourself. Because once you've done a few of these, it really is quite simple. It's not, I mean, I use Ohm's law every day, really, most days. So what about that other triangle there, that P equals I, P uh, equal, well, P equals IV. Let's have a look at that one. So there it is, PIV. And it works exactly the same as this one. So if we know the power of a, a um, let's say a bulb, and we know the voltage it's designed for, we can work out the current. So exactly the same. Cover the eye, because that's what we're looking for. The current in the circuit. And let's, go, let's think of an example then. So I equals P over V. So let's pick a, again, let's pick some easy numbers to start with. Let's say we had a, a lamp that was 100 watt. Okay, 100 watt lamp. Uh, and the voltage, we're gonna, again, making it very easy. Let's say the voltage was 50 volts. We wanna find out what current would flow in this circuit. If this was 50 and the power of this, so the power of this, was 100 watts. So back down to here. So it is literally 100 over 50, which equals two. So in that circuit, in that circuit, if the supply was 100 volts and the, sorry, the power was 100, volt, uh, 100 watts and the voltage was 50 volts, it would give us a current flowing in that circuit of two amps. Now, really, that is, for all intents and purposes, the only relationships we need to know for cable sizing, uh, fusing, which is really common, uh, installations, how much current is going to draw from that, how long will a battery last on with a certain load on it. We can cover all that as we go forward in the future. But these... These two triangles, VIR, PIV, are the ones that really are the, the, your bread and butter when you're trying to solve a circuit, a simple circuit like this. So let's pick something in the real world, shall we? Okay, so a real world example is uh, LED, or LED array. You can see on the label it says, uh, can you see that 12 volts dc and led max power 1.8 watts okay so 12 volts 1.8 watts so one of the real questions we have is how much current will that pull if that's the right word or demand from that 12 volt power supply Okay, so going down, we've got power <clears throat> and we've got voltage, so we can work out the current. Cover that one over, I equals P over V. So if we use I equals P over V, so power 1.8, so that comes out to 0. 
0.15 amps. You see why LEDs are so efficient. <coughs> Excuse me. So what if we add 10 of these on a circuit? Well, they'd all draw the same pretty much. So you'd say, well, I've, I've got 10 LEDs, which would, which would now give me 1.5 amps. So now I can figure out what cable size I need, which we're gonna cover in a future date, what cable size we need, and what fuse we'd use then to protect that cable. All that sort of stuff we're gonna cover in the future. So that's a real world, a real world example. Simple Ohm's laws using volts, current, resistance and power. Uh, you can see the units there, volts, amperes, ohms, watts. You can say amps, everybody does. And we're applying it to a very simple circuit with values that we've just worked out. And we can sort of, well not sort of, but exactly just explode, that, not explode, that's the wrong word. <laughs> We can explore that circuit and we can say with real confidence that we know exactly what's going to happen in that circuit when it's connected up to some kind of power source. So <clears throat> I hope that's been of, of use. Let's do a few examples and you can work on those yourself. So I equals, we don't know, question mark. Uh, and we've got 12 volts and uh, 50 watt. So what is, let's put a comma there. What is the current on there? Okay. And at the same time, if, if we know uh, the voltage, uh, let's put 24 volts. And we know the resistance is 20 ohms. Okay, so we also, we can do, let's do a few more. So we've got I is 10 amps. Uh, voltage is 24 volts. And what will be the resistance uh, of the load in that circuit. So why would we want that? Well, that could be something we want to test. We want to test this uh, circuit, let's say a bulb, and we want to know really what uh, what resistance we're sort of looking for. Within reason, there was, there's some wriggle room there, but we'll cover that in future, future vlogs. This is quite basic, right at the very start of our understanding. And let's work another one. We've got, we've got a current of 100 amps, uh, a supply of 12 volts, what would the power be? Okay, so there's just four there. What I'll do, there's just four examples there. What I'll do, I'll put the answers down in the, in the comments box, just so you can cross-reference them. Again, not for everybody, not entertainment really, but just to start that grey matter thinking about what's going on when we talk about electrical circuits. If you can master that, then we can move on to parallel circuits and series circuits and how we apply uh, those rules and how what the characteristics are of those different circuits. And that might be batteries or LEDs or something else. So thank you so much for being with me on this first narrowboat tech talk <laughs> it's a bit of a mouthful i uh, hope you got something from that leave me a comment in the in the box if you like give us a thumbs up if you like that if it was useful to you then yeah feel free to share that video or or to drop us a comment below so right we'll see you next time and i think next time we'll start to look at series and parallel circuits maybe separately so we don't bite off too much because the parallel ones are a bit more difficult Okay, I'll catch you next time. Thanks very much. Bye-bye. Bye.